are periodic classifications of elements and control and coordination. Up to which element the law of octaves was found to be applicable? Ma'am, laws of octaves was applicable up to calcium. A and B are the two elements having similar properties which obey Newland's law of octaves. How many elements are there in between A and B? Ma'am, according to Newland's law of octaves, every eighth element has properties similar to that of the first. The elements A and B have similar properties which obey Newland's law of octaves. Thus, there are six elements in between A and B. Why are noble gases missing from Newland's octaves? Ma'am, the noble gases were not known at that time and therefore they are missing from Newland's octaves. What is meant by periodicity in properties of elements with reference to periodic table? Ma'am, with the repetition of properties of elements after regular intervals when the elements are arranged in the order of their increasing atomic numbers is called periodicity. Atomic number is considered to be a more appropriate parameter than atomic mass for classifications of elements in a periodic table. Why? Ma'am, the properties of elements depend upon valence electrons in the atom which in turn depends on the total number of electrons, that is atomic number. Therefore, atomic number is a more appropriate parameter than atomic mass. Write the atomic numbers of two elements X and Y having electronic configuration 282 and 286 respectively. Ma'am, atomic number of X is equals to 2 plus 8 plus 2 will be 12 and atomic number of Y will be 2 plus 8 plus 6 which equals 16. Write the valency and usual number of valence electrons of group 18 of the periodic table. Ma'am, the valency is 0 and the number of valence electrons will be 8. Where would you locate the element with electronic configuration 2, 8 in the modern periodic table? Ma'am, since the element contains 8 valence electrons, thus it belongs to the group 18 and it has 2 shells. Therefore, it belongs to second period of modern periodic table. Out of Na, Al, Si and P, which element exhibits a maximum number of valence electrons? Ma'am, P, since its atomic number is 15 and the electronic configuration is 2, 8, 5. Hence, P contains 5 valence electrons. Account for the following. Elements of group 17 are monovalent. Ma'am, group 17 elements, example fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine have 7 valence electrons. By gaining 1 electron, they can achieve inert gas configuration. Thus, they have a valency of 1 and hence they are called monovalent. Account for the following. Elements of group 18 are called zero valent. Ma'am, elements of group 18 have completely filled outermost shell and have no tendency to gain or lose electrons. So, they are zero valent. Elements A, B, C and D have atomic number 1, 8, 11 and 90 respectively. Choose the odd element and give reason for the answer. Ma'am, odd element is B having atomic number 8. The reason is B has 6 electrons in its valence cells. But A, C and D have only 1 electron in their valence cells. Mention the type of compounds formed between group 1 and group 17 elements. Ma'am, ionic compound. An element X is in second period of group 16 of periodic table. Is it metal or non-metal? Give reason for your answer. Ma'am, second period suggests that there are two shells present in an element, while group 16 suggests that there are six valence electrons. Thus, electronic configuration is 2, 6. Its atomic number is 8 and it is a non-metal as it contains six valence electrons. An element X forms a chloride with formula XCl3. The element X would most likely be in the same group of the periodic table as is Na, Ng, Al or Ca. And the formula of chloride is XCl3. That means the valency of the element X is 3. The element having valency 3 will be present in the group 13. Among the given choices, aluminium belongs to the group 13. Now let's go to the second chapter that is control and coordination. All information about our environment is detected by specialized cells. Write the name given to such cells and also mention where they are located. Ma'am, such cells are called receptors. They are located in our various sense organs, that is olfactory receptors. Name two tissues which provide control and coordination in animals. Ma'am, nervous and muscular tissues are two tissues which provide control and coordination in animals. Name two components of central nervous system in humans. 
map, two components of central nervous system are brain and spinal cord. Name the sensory receptors found in the nose and on the tongue. Ma'am, olfactory receptors and gustatory receptors are the sensory receptors found in nose and on the tongue, respectively. Give some examples of involuntary actions. Ma'am, the examples of involuntary actions are beating of heart and blinking of eyes. Identify the parts of brain concerned with memory, will and power. Ma'am, cerebral hemisphere. Give any one function performed by our brain. Ma'am, it receives information carried by nerve impulses from all sensory organs of the body. What is the fluid present in between the meninges? Ma'am, cerebrospinal fluid. Name the structure in which spinal cord is protected in human body. Ma'am, vertebral column. Name any two types of trophic movements. Ma'am, geotropism that is responsible to gravity and chemotropism that is responsible to chemical substances. Identify the stimulus in the tip of stump growing away from the earth's surface. Ma'am, gravity. What do we call the movement of shoot towards light? Ma'am, the movement of shoot towards light is called positive phototropism. A young green plant receives sunlight from one direction only. What will happen to its shoots and roots? Ma'am, the shoots of the plant bend towards the light whereas roots bend away from the light. Mean one plant growth hormone which makes the seed dormant during extremely dry season. Ma'am, abscisic acid makes the seed dormant in extremely dry season. Name one plant hormone which inhibits growth. Write its one more function. Ma'am, abscisic acid. It also causes dormancy in seeds. So this is enough for today. Please prepare for the next.